My name is Staff Sergeant Michael Heck. I'm with the 127th Aircraft Maintenance Squadron. I am an electrical integrated systems mechanic. I'm responsible for the computer systems on this aircraft, for making sure the flight controls are functional, the autopilots are functional, and everything involving survivability of the aircraft and the pilot are all absolutely functional. You can think of avionics as aviation electronics. All the data in between the computers on this aircraft we have to make sure are functional. The computers themselves have to be working properly and above all making sure that the aircraft and the pilot itself are 100% safe at all times. To do that we'll take information from the pilots, we'll take information from our own schedules, we'll go out to the aircraft, we'll run all kinds of tests and various checks on these aircraft to make sure that the equipment in them is working. We'll pull out the individual computers, we'll check those individual computers, we will check the wiring on the aircraft, we will run tests on the wiring itself. Anything having to do with data we'll make sure is working properly, put the aircraft back together and send it back up in the air. I was able to make a success here because I believe in the mission. and I'm willing to stick and I'm willing to do what I have to do to make that mission a success. I feel like every time I come into this shop and work with these people, I'm working with a group of people who are absolute professionals. And that's a very hard thing to find in any vain job anywhere, either the civilian side or here in the service. Um, I feel like when I come in and I put this uniform on, I'm part of a real team. You wear a uniform and that uniform always displays who and what you are. And, uh, I would say it's to this day the best decision I've ever made. Over here we're working on a lot of radar repair. It's a, it's a new system of ours. It's actually been very maintenance friendly since we've had it and we got it probably around COVID time frame. But now we're kind of flying it enough to where things are starting to break and we're having to essentially just try and figure out the system ourselves. That incorporates a lot of just working with the engineers, um, trying to tell them what we're seeing and what they can do to kind of help us because some of our documentation doesn't always explain the whole story or anything like that. The error that we're running into, it's, it seems like it's kind of unprecedented. The fault trees that we have aren't necessarily pointing us in the right direction because this is a system that 99% of the time it'll tell you what's wrong and point you in a, the right direction. If you have a million paths to take, it'll bring it down to about five. Right now we're not getting any of that information so we're trying to eliminate those, path, those millions of paths ourselves and trying to see what might be a viable way forward because time's pretty precious. We only have two goes a day. They want these jets. These are very important and capable jets for them and we need to get it to them. Uh, as far as what we gain most out of Red Flag, as far as maintenance goes, uh, a lot of it is stress testing. It, you know, we're a guard unit. We have a lot of guard people and a lot of people that don't see the heavy maintenance that we do. Um, avionics, if you ask anybody in the Air Force and maintenance what they do, they'll say box swappers or something like that. This is the actual core of what we do. It's getting into the wiring, stuff like that, and it's giving these guys some experience to actually do the hard jobs and try and understand our systems a lot more so that we can give these jets to, to the pilots and basically and then increases their knowledge for our next trip. It's a new system, like I said, but it does integrate with a system that's older than I am. Now, dealing with that, with the rest of these systems, it becomes exceptionally harder the more time we go and the more hours we put on these to keep maintaining them with all the systems that are under our purview, so to speak. And these guys just work every day um, to really just deliver the best avionics packages that we can um, because, yeah, the engines get the jets flying the and everyone else just does their part in it. Um, and at the final end of the road for the pilot itself, he needs everything that we work on to be able to put bombs on target and everything like that. So it's a lot of an integrated effort and these guys are doing a fantastic job of essentially drinking through a fire hose to make it happen. These, the frequencies of our maintenance, um, it doesn't matter what system it is, it, it's becoming every day there's at least three things that we need to fix from what the pilots are flying. The jets, they're holding up as best they can, but overall it's, it's, we're dealing with a million electronic parts and anyone can fail and cause the system to break. Now as far as this system itself, we're just re reaching that point now to where things are starting to break. Those millions of parts are starting to blow and we're just trying to have to figure out which one, which capacitor, which electronic part is just 
wrong so that we can fix it. My name is Staff Sergeant Shelby Throckmorton and I'm an avionics technician with the world famous, highly respected Triple Nickel. My job includes everything from navigation, communication, flight controls, fire control radar, radar threat warning, and sniper pods. My job affects the mission because without all these important systems and subsystems, the plane wouldn't be able to fly and the pilot wouldn't be able to do all the awesome stuff he can do in the air. So what we did today was change the glare assembly in the sniper pod. It included taking off the shroud, which is the front part of the sniper pod, and then taking off the glare assembly itself and reinstalling a different one. Basically it's used for infrared and also helping the pilot be able to see better with this pod during clouds and bad weather. I think today went really well. The general got in there and put his hands in, broke a little sweat out, so that was fun, and I think he learned a little bit more about the sniper pods as well. 